If you're new to Blueprint in Unreal Engine, this tutorial series will teach you the basics you need to get you started in making your projects interactive and awesome. Today, we will learn about Blueprint class. With that said, let's get started. It's time to create a Blueprint class. Let's say you want to take this functionality to another level or to another project. Unfortunately, you can't because this is made in the level blueprint. The only way to take this is to copy everything. It's gonna be painful to move this between levels or project. Let's click on blueprints and click on new empty blueprint class and let's choose an actor. Or let's make a new folder call it BP. It stands for blueprints. Right click, you can create basic asset blueprint class. It will open the same dialog for us. Let's choose an actor. This is our new blueprint and let's call it actor. Let's double click our blueprint. It's kind of different from the level blueprint. What's new here is other than the event graph is the viewport and the construction script. What else is new? We have the components. The components panel will contain components. Just like here we have variables and like functions and whatnot. Here we can click to add audio, static meshes, all of these guys, you can use them to make all kinds of different blueprints. Keeping things very simple, I'm going to add static mesh. When we click here, we have now on the details panel, a new variable that is static mesh. We can give it a tooltip, we can give it a category, set the location, rotation, the transform, just like the options we have here. All of them are also here. So I'm going to compile first and then let's see what type of static mesh we can. Let's just add a book. Now, when we compile, save, just put this guy on the side, we can add this book everywhere. So we can actually right click this book, asset actions, migrate this blueprint with whatever functionality it have to all kinds of different projects and levels. It will just work. Imagine here you have an elevator system with this uh, blueprint actor and you have all the different components that would make an elevator. Ground, the walls, the lights, all of them are within the components and here you would have like your elevator and you can just click and drag. If you're working with prefabs or you want to do something that is modular, we do that with blueprints. From event begin play, I would like to do something to this book. I'm gonna click and drag and let's call it book first. So book, so it changed here as well. Let's say I want this book to go up just like elevator when event begin play. So click and drag and let's search, hmm, go up. What do you mean with that? It's like similar to transform, location and stuff. Nice. So let's search and see if we can type location in the chat app, <laughs> in the search bar here, chat. Location, there is stuff that has to do with physics. There is stuff that has to do with transformation. And I think we are close because what we're looking for is a transformation, right? Here, set relative location. The target is our book and we can connect this executable bin to event begin play and the new location is a vector variable that has three values x y and z so the location let's set it 100 units click compile save and let's see what will happen if we press play will it work oh it worked so let's drag like 50 books and let's see what when we happen play ha it offset this book 100 units and Everything here just works across all of these guys. This is where Blueprint class actually shines. Because imagine if you have, these are static meshes now. If you want to move all these books to the top using the level Blueprint. I think you guessed it. You need to select these guys, then open the level Blueprint and create a reference for each and every one of them. Wow, that's too much work. I'm going to search again for location. There is set relative location and rotation. There is set word location and rotation. If you hover your mouse, you can learn about these different nodes. I'm going to set relative location and rotation, and I'm going to connect this guy here. And instead of entering values here on this vector, I'm going to right click somewhere on the, where it says a new location and click on split struct pin XYZ. It's a vector, the yellow is always a vector. So if you create a variable and let's call it vector, click compile, this is a float now. It has only one value. If you change this to vector, click compile, you will see this value here is X, Y, and Z. Just like exactly what we have here. Right click, click on split structure pin 
and you will notice that we have now three inputs each input is now green this means that new input now is a float click and drag to add a new node from this place and let's search for random so we have random float we have random float from stream we have random float in range random float what is this it says hey return a random float between 0 and 1 what else we have? We have random float in range. If you want something more than 0 and 1, there is generate random number between min and max. I'm gonna connect this to the Z only, and the meme, min, <laughs> meme is 100, and the max is 500. I'm gonna compile, and I'm going to press play. And now, our books, they move up on the Z axis between 100 and 500. Very cool. We can do the same for rotation so here this is called rotator and we can also split it and now it's also in floats if you don't want to deal with rotator so because if we drag from here and search for random we have random rotator click on it and it's just different ways to deal with the inputs and outputs so if you want for example to be able to use these on this guy you need to split it first and Unreal Engine also helps us. So when you click on this random float and when I connect it here, now it won't work. It tells you, hey, float is not compatible with rotator. However, sometimes when it's possible, Unreal will try and help. So I'm going to use a simpler example like print string. And I'm going to connect this random float here. It will convert float to string for us. So it will add a converter node where it takes float in and string out. Now, if we press connected event begin play, so press play, and these are the values we got between 0 and 1. Nice. Let's say we want to use this in something that is not a book. Let's say we want to add another component. Let's add a light. Let's search for point light. If you go to viewport, there is our book and there is a point light. Compile, save. There is now a point light everywhere. Put one here, one here. Before we press play, let's just connect this guy here so we can have a random location on the z-axis and the rotation as well. This is kind of now cool. We have got random rotation. Cool. As you may have guessed, we can also use these floats in determining the color of our light. So let's drag our light, search for color, and let's connect this to event begin play, or we just can connect it to engine events begin play execute this give me a random location and rotation then i want you to do something with the light color the new light color this is linear color structure let's see random array important sample it seems that this is not what i'm looking for if we press play we will get error messages and that's why we always compile before we hit play what else can we do then let's just right click and split structure pin and now we have floats this is why splitting the structure pin is useful because we have random for red, green, blue, alpha. Noise. We will take random float, delete it, delete the string, let's connect it, and let's click play. Now we have pink, this stays white or similar, this is another pink, and this is warm. And now we can tell, hey, this stuff is working. Let's click play again, we have different lights again, and this will just keep like randomized forever which is super cool every time you hit play you get different results let's say we would like to change the material of this chair when we do something let's open our blueprint let's get rid of the point light and let's switch this static mesh from book to this chair i'm going to press ctrl b on my chair to locate it then once this is selected in my content browser i would select the book and just replace the mesh and let's call this guy arm chair think it looked like this because it's the way it's been exported by the way keep that in mind so in 3ds max we need to reset x form to apply the transform location rotation on this chair before we export it with data smith this is one of the things you need to avoid when you are exporting your uh, meshes but for now let's not worry about it however to avoid doing this stuff make sure you apply your transform before you export to unreal engine Let's click compile and now we get a bad blueprint. The reason we got a bad blueprint here is not because of the chair, but because we did have some nodes in our blueprint class that are not relative anymore. So for now, here there is like this, hey, events begin play, set relative location rotation for whatever target is seen component, but set light color random and here we have the error and it says here, which light? And like, oh. 
we don't have a light anymore unless you have a light here then yes that light so get rid of this compile again and life should be good here are our chairs now stuff looks good let's get rid of this make some space keep one guy here and as you would expect it if we hit play it will go up and it will rotate because we still have this stuff here and that's the beauty of blueprint so for now we don't need this stuff we just need the armchair and let's think we want to change the material of this armchair if we click and drag and just search for material we can see mesh get material get materials create dynamic material instance this is what we need by the way and there are just so many things there is also set material and cool let's click on set material then let's ignore the material instance until we create a material instance because i think this material is from data smith as well and it is nightmarish yeah so set material if you take a look at our chair so let's click here double click it has element 0 element 1 and here it says which element you like so it's 0 or 1 for now let's keep it at 0 and now it tells you hey select the material so now if you just select any other material click compile and save hit play it's going to change the material to whatever we selected nice this is one step towards changing materials right let's see if you also want to change the material element one we can just duplicate this make a copy sorry set element one then just set a different material click compile we get an error because we need to set the target and the target is our static mesh it's the chair so now when we press play things are good right now we are changing the material on event begin play but we don't want that we also don't want to use the trigger volume we want to use our keyboard well i'm glad you asked let's remove this and let's right click and just which button on the keyboard you want one so right click and search for input so here we have input we have all types of inputs we have mouse inputs keyboard events gamepad and all that good stuff so keyboard keyboard <laughs> keyboard events we have all our keys on the keyboard so let's say we want to use one pressed released this makes sense let's take this even one step ahead and like let's bring the programmer inside us and start debugging this and like let's type press one or one press and let's see if we click play again nothing is happening why okay can we try this somewhere else Control c and i'm going to open my level blueprint and i'm gonna put it here and click play all right that's weird it worked in the level blueprint but not in the blueprint class what's happening what can we do well we need to tell the engine how somehow to take input events from this blueprint class so right click search for event begin play from here i'm going to click enable input and compile this nothing is connected yet but we need to connect something and let's click play click one nothing is happening interesting because we need something here we need to tell it who is the target and who is the player controller so right click again and let's see get player controller and player index zero is us this is some of the things we need to be familiar with to enable input we need to get the player controller don't forget this and now we can connect it to the player controller yeah it worked so that's what we needed to do with our blueprint class when event begin play enable input for our player controller and then this will start taking events hey it's your boy Yahya I hope you learned something useful today if you just finished watching today's tutorial and you're hungry to learn more you can go to vrdivisionacademy.com and if you find these tutorials useful and you want to help us make more consider becoming an academy member wow other than that thank you for watching and take care your boy is out <laughs>